Welcome to the Adventure Brief, the podcast designed to help you learn more about the startup ecosystem in Scotland. The Adventure Brief is brought to you by the managing team of Adventure, Zara, Ragnar, Finn, and me, Shannon. We're Scotland's first student-led accelerator program, bringing the university's most talented people and ideas together to build real-world startups and build long-lasting networks through our acceleration program. Each week, we choose a topic and invite a successful startup founder or VC onto the show to talk about their journey and experiences. Exciting startups will be showcased as well as interviewing experienced domain experts in AI, biotech, and academic staff from our university. Hi, everyone. This is your host, Shannon. And this week's topic, we're, we're just going to like go into um, discussing what Adventure is, why it has been created, and I'm just going to be um, interviewing the co-hosts, uh, the co-founder um, of Adventure. So, um, Zara, would you like to start introducing who you are and why you're in Adventure? Sure. So, my name is Zara. I'm a fourth-year student studying Arabic and French. And I started Adventure with my co-founders, Finn and Ragnar. Um, all three of us have experienced starting a, um, a startup before. Um, so we know exactly what, you know, the ups and the downs of that journey are, what we did really well, what we didn't do very well. And we've been able to factor all that experience into creating our program for Adventure. Uh, we noticed there was a gap in the market for helping students that have an idea bring that idea to life. Um, and actually helping them at the different stages from business essentials to legal structures to marketing, growth, funding, and actually launching that startup. Um, and in addition to that, actually a network of people, experts, mentors, um, that can help along the way. So that's what we try to do, uh, fill that gap with adventure. All right. Thank you. How about uh, Ragnar? Yeah, so hi, I'm Ragnar. Um, I'm also a fourth year student in AI and computer science. Um, so I co-founded Adventure with, uh, with the others uh, because I was always very passionate about entrepreneurship as a way to find solutions um, to big societal problems that, uh, that face us in modern days. And um, Adventure, or the reasoning behind Adventure was that we felt there was a gap in the kind of startup ecosystem, especially within universities, in that there's a high concentration of really talented people uh, but there's some some process lacking uh, that actually accelerates the the startup development process, and so that's why we came up with Adventure as a way to uh, bring really smart people together, um, give them ideas, or let them develop their own, and then uh, give them the right framework to develop their ideas. All right, cool. And Finn. Uh, hi, I'm Finn, and I study neuroscience. Um, I co-founded my first startup with my brother, Ragnar, in, in high school, which was um, a startup where customers could personalize uh, magazines. So they had like personalized editorial content. And I co-founded um, Adventure with them because I was always interested in like venture capital and a startup ecosystem. And I feel like uh, working in an accelerator gives you the opportunity to, to have a bird's eye view on the, on the dynamics in, in startups instead of being really kind of encapsulated within one startup. So um, that is why, why I co-founded Adventure with them. Cool, um, and I'm just part of the team. Um, I'm a part of the team in the accelerator program called Impart, and we are uh, essentially working um, on alleviating homelessness by addressing, um, you know, uh, like foster care youths as our target group. Um, so yeah. Thank you so much for introducing yourself. Uh, should we talk more about, um, you know, like what the adventure program is, uh, what it entails, and just more about the program in general? So the the accelerator program is a is a ten week program in which uh, which is organized in parallel to the startup life cycle. So it's it mirrors the startup life cycle. So we go through important. Um, milestones of building a startup such as uh, growth, launching, uh, building MVP. We have workshops, we have lectures, um, we have team meetings. So each team has a so-called project success manager that's assigned to them, which is part of our team, which will help guide them through, through difficult parts and through uh, individual parts of the accelerator program. The accelerator program then culminates in a, in a, fi a finale in which um, we have an audience of all people involved in the program 
as well as investors and partner investors that we in, invited. And the, the finalists are going to pitch to all these people and we're going to then introduce the finalists um, to, the, to our partner investors as well as giving, as well as giving cash prizes to the, to the startups that showed the best progress within the accelerator. Mm, nice. And um, in terms of like the finalists, how many finalists would be recruited at the very end? So uh, obviously we aim at selecting around two uh, finalists, but um, it will obviously um, differ from cohort to cohort because we might have better quality startups in one semester than in the other. Uh, so, uh, but in general, we'll aim at uh, two startups, but we'll be flexible in depending on, uh, you know, if we have seen really good progress in, in many different stuff, then we'll definitely accommodate more uh, finalists. All right. So if final, if uh, teams do not make it to the finalist stage, will they be paired up with um, VCs or investors? Um, obviously, this depends on uh, on uh, the maturity of the startup and if it is at the stage where uh, it will be able to raise capital. Because uh, even at seed stage, investors will not invest in any kind of uh, startups. They have to at least demonstrate some kind of uh, traction in the market, uh, some initial MVP that that shows. Uh, a potential success um, but uh, essentially that will um, we'll figure that out at the end and how depending on how the startups have evolved over the program and just to add to that throughout the program with our guest speakers our mentors um, some of those are VCs or people that have uh, expertise in in funding in the startup ecosystem therefore all teams will have exposure to to these kind of experts and can ask some relevant questions can make those connections because a big part of adventure is that network which is a huge added value for anyone creating a startup um, so all teams will have a lot of opportunities, whether or not they're actually the two finalists. Well, that's amazing. Um, and in terms of uh, the teams, can you go deeper into, like, for example, what uh, the teams have come up with so far for now? So we are trying to keep it a bit under wraps because we want to do an exciting announcement. But what I can tell you is that all 14 teams that we have are extremely diverse in their ideas and their sectors. Um, this allows them to also have the sort of collaboration aspect because they're not competing directly with each other. Um, many of the teams are interested in sustainability um, and whether or not they've got a product or service that is directly targeted at the sustainability sector, all teams um, have factored that into their design. And as the accelerator grows, that is a big part of what we want to create, uh, teams that work towards solving um, social issues and factor in the sustainability. Um, we have, we're also very proud to say that our, our cohort is extremely diverse, not only in its ideas, but in participants coming from all over the world, speaking many, many different languages and bringing so many different perspectives to the table, which throughout, um, you know, the first week and a half we've seen um, has produced really, really exciting and innovative uh, conversations. It's great to see how, you know, um, a lot of the teams are focusing on sustainability and social impact as part of their business uh, model. Would you say that it is one of the key judging criteria uh, for it to become to end up on the finalist lists? Um, it's definitely something we'd like to consider. Uh, we definitely would not have a finalist with an idea, a project or vision that's harming the environment or is, is not good for people. So social impact is not necessarily the main criteria, but definitely something we'll factor in. And uh, teams that, that have a look at sustainability and make it a large part of their project that they're, they're pursuing over the 10 weeks, that will definitely give them a huge advantage because that is at the core of what we do at Adventure. Um, and especially uh, through the coming cohorts that will become more and more of a stress in the, in the program. And also many startups might not uh, come up as social enterprises in the direct sense uh, but implicitly uh, many do uh, or the stuff that we do accept uh, they should have some kind of societal value in their uh, value proposition uh, one example is a uh, language lens uh, which uh, aims at uh, developing a, a language app which also incorporates uh, grammar rules and a lot of kind of grammatical content uh, aside from conventional apps that that only kind of focus on vocabulary and although this is not really labeled a social enterprise in the kind of in the definition, uh, it does give some kind of very um, 
important society value because uh, lang learning languages can be uh, really useful in bringing different cultures together and also for um, helping people uh, be more successful in their careers. All right. Um, so I'm hearing, and what I'm hearing is that um, adventure really, really focuses on, you know, social impact. Um, um, so how does that link to, you know, the purpose of adventure um, or the vision of adventure in a long term and like a short term kind of sense? So yeah, in the in the long term, we definitely um, aim at expanding adventure uh, to uh, the UK, to other UK universities, and uh, also in, in Europe in general, um, because we believe that this program already through through this first cohort has seen uh, quite a lot of success, and uh, and we want to give the opportunity to other students at other universities uh, and uh, make adventure kind of an integral part of university life that our students can. Uh, build startups through this program and that every university can uh, offer that to their students or any kind of university ecosystem. Um, with regard to a short-term vision, we really wanted to focus on Edinburgh in the first place um, to ensure the best quality possible. So although the program is online, we really want to focus on Edinburgh for now, for this semester at least, just to, because this is kind of our pilot program, right? So. We're trying to, to set up everything and then we try to create a blueprint that we can expand to other universities. But for now, it's just um, in, in Edinburgh and we're focusing on University of Edinburgh students and we might expand that to, to academic staff because obviously they have a very uh, specialized field of interest and expertise, which is always really interesting when you want to, to found a startup. That's why also we, we put focus and emphasis on, on recruiting uh, PhD students or master's students in our um, in our program, although there are a lot of undergrads as well, but it's because of their specialized expertise that they really often have a competitive edge to other people who are not this deep into the into the topic. So we have had um, one or two programs by uh, one or two startups by by PhD students that are really interesting because they're so um, sp specific to their subject of interest and what they're studying. But this, at the same time, gives them quite a, a head start with regard to um, I mean, a head start in in the sense that other people, due to the lack of this, the specialized expertise, don't have access to the information they have, and thus cannot uh, replicate the same at the same time. Yeah, I guess we're just very lucky in a sense how you know we're an accelerator that has been founded in the University of Edinburgh, so we're able to have this vast network of um, you know academic students and also academic staff. Um, to be joined with us on the team. Um, in terms of, so we've, we've kind of like outlined our purpose, our vision in the long term and in the short term. We've introduced the cohort. Um, can we also look at how, what we're trying to expect to see um, on our future podcast? So what will be included? Um, what, what will viewers be expecting to listen to in our future podcasts? Yes, yeah, so in the future podcast, we will have a range of different formats. Um, so one will obviously be um, talks with experts in different domains. Uh, it can be uh, academic staff from universities. It can be um, uh, past entrepreneurs that have experience in founding startups or uh, VCs who have experience in funding them. Uh, a second format will be uh, the, uh, showcasing our startups, what are they building um, and what problems are they solving. The third format will be essentially uh, some kind of problem depiction. So we will, uh, we will tackle a certain societal problem or environmental problem um, and then try to uh, gather different uh, experts uh, on, that, uh, on that problem and, uh, and also give some suggestions for solutions. So one example might be, uh, for example, plastic pollution uh, in the oceans. Uh, and then we will kind of explain the problem in, its, uh, more, de in more detail and uh, also give some... Um, suggestions for solutions and uh, kind of a call to action for staffs to develop solutions on these kind of problems. So uh, this will be the third format. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to, to it. I think what we're trying to aim for is to have a wide range of content for our audience to consume. So not only will they be updated on the startup ecosystem in Scotland, they'll also be, you know, like, um, updated on like, for example, news and current updates of, you know, the, the startup ecosystem and what they could do to help um, be a part of this wider community. Exactly. Um, so 
I guess the one last thing that I want to ask you guys is what are some of like the most exciting speakers that we're going to be inviting um, onto the show? So um, we have various speakers already confirmed and then we have another section of speakers in the works, which are very exciting. So far, you can expect to hear from the founder of Skyscanner. Um, you can hear from the founder of FanDuel. Uh, founders of various different companies in, in different sectors as well. Um, we're also talking to some really exciting Scottish local uh, social enterprises. Um, but all of these speakers, once they're confirmed, will be announced on our website. So stay tuned. Um, we have also a network of mentors and even the mentors will also be announced on our website um, on our LinkedIn and our Facebook. And towards the end, we also have more speakers focused on funding and uh, and uh, raising uh, funds for, for your startup. So uh, for that, we have uh, Luigi Amati, um, uh, really experienced uh, VC uh, and also um, head of uh, Business Angels Europe. So um, this will be also very, very valuable advice um, uh, for the startup. Amazing, cool. Um, so I guess we've covered all grounds for today. Um, if you're listening in, please do check out all of our distributional channels of our content. So we'll be releasing um, our videos on our YouTube channel. We'll be releasing our podcasts, not only on Spotify, but also um, Apple Podcasts. And also we'll have a sub page to our adventure website. So please do check it out. Um, we're also collaborating with Fresh Air, which is Edinburgh University's student society for um, radio shows. So we will be, um, you know, like uh, hosting our missions tentatively on Sunday, but please stay tuned for that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you for <laughs> listening in and we'll see you soon. <laughs>